What's up everybody, Kinetic here and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Mage Specialization, the Knight Enchanter. I asked in the last video what you would like to see for the next specialization video after Reaver and there were pretty even votes for a lot of different specializations including Knight Enchanter. So I thought to myself, well you know what, I'm kind of anxious actually personally to take a look at the Knight Enchanter because my curiosity has been hooked into what exactly makes the Knight Enchanter so OP because that's pretty much the general consensus of uh, the, the Night Enchanter, right? Is that, is that it's just ridiculously OP and it makes even Nightmare look like a joke. Let's go and get the, the most obvious stuff out of the way from the Night Enchanter tree and the Spirit tree to go over what makes the Night Enchanter so ridiculously powerful. Starting with the Spirit Blade, you create a blade of solid magic to make melee attacks against nearby enemies, bypassing their guard and barriers. So right off the bat, we have a, a magical ability that bypasses, just completely ignores an enemy's guard and barrier. That's already quite powerful for a uh, any kind of special ability. Spirit damage, 300% weapon damage, bonus against barrier, 200% bonus against guard, 400%. Costs 10 mana per attack while active. Now, this does have a pretty interesting upgrade for Defending Blade. You deflect incoming projectiles with Spirit Blade sending a shockwave of energy back at the attacker. You've noticed that I haven't taken this quite yet because while it does sound quite interesting and, uh, and certainly will make spirit blade even more valuable i it isn't as high on my priority list right now as other active and passive abilities that i would like to put together let's look at some of those passives starting on the left here we've got combat clarity the chaos of combat frightens some but for you it's a comfortable rhythm your mana regenerates faster when you're near hostile enemies this is a really really amazing passive 50 percent mana generation uh, bonus just for being close to enemies within five meters and of course since we're swinging away with spirit blade that makes it easy to uh, to qualify in that five meter distance. Down below that we've got Fade Shield. You draw back the energy released by your enemies in your attacks against them. Any successful attack strengthens your barrier. The more damage you do, the more powerful your barrier grows. I think this is probably single-handedly the most powerful uh, passive ability that the mage, maybe even any class, has to be able to empower a barrier 30 percent of the damage dealt by attacks um, basically the, all this amounts to is you swinging with a uh, spirit blade and you have this infinite shield protecting you from taking any damage it's pretty ridiculous i would say if you want to make a knight enchanter more uh, challenging don't take fade shield <laughs> because without that it's probably half as effective as a uh, as a build a little bit down from there, we've got Knight Protector. Your adept with defensive magic, barriers you create take longer to naturally decay. That is one of the things about barrier that uh, was its major weakness. Is unlike guard, which uh, just stays there indefinitely, barrier does decay. But with this passive, it decays 35% uh, slower. So combine that with Fade Shield, and it's not hard to see how you pretty much have this uh, eternal barrier going. As long as you're doing something, <laughs> you pretty much have a barrier on your mage. Fade Cloak. You surround yourself with the magic of the veal itself. You are briefly invulnerable and can pass through enemies unharmed. Uh, this works both ways, of course. Not just that you can pass through enemies, but they can pass through you. So if anything tries to attack you, you can simply hit Fade Cloak and their sword, their dragon tail, whatever it is that's trying to hit you, is going to go right through you. Of course, you have to time this properly because this only lasts two seconds, but um, it's pretty awesome for, uh, for what it does. But that's not what makes it fun and entertaining for me. What makes it fun and entertaining is the upgrade, Decloaking Blast. If you rematerialize in, inside an enemy, they're blasted back with massive force. Spirit damage of a thousand weapon damage. That's, I can't even, you know, looking at 
the other abilities that uh, the other classes have and stuff like that typically they have somewhere between like 200 maybe 500 or something like that weapon damage a thousand spirit weapon damage that's that's the highest i've seen easily um that isn't necessarily either what makes this fun it's it's simply the act of going invisible uh around enemies they can't figure out where you are and then suddenly you pop back into view you blast them up into the air it's it's just i don't know why it's tons of fun if that wasn't enough we have is this even arguable? I, I would think that pretty much almost everybody would agree that Resurgence is hands down the best focus ability in Dragon Age Inquisition. You call on benign spirits to restore you and your allies for continuing the fight. All party members are healed to full health, including those who have fallen unconscious. And a glyph around you provides ongoing healing to the party for the spell's duration. So basically, as long as you're the, the last one standing, and you will be because you're almost impossible to kill as Night Enchanter, if everybody else goes down, no problem. Just activate Resurgence, everybody comes back up to full health, and game on. Let's take a look now over at the Spirit Tree. This goes hand in hand pretty much. These active and passives work incredibly well for the Night Enchanter. We've got Barrier, of course. You create a shimmering protective barrier that acts as temporarily additional health. The barrier decays naturally over time, as I mentioned before. So we've got a 4 meter size area and it's got a cooldown time of 24 seconds. This is a barrier that you can cast and everybody that's inside of it uh, gets it and it helps from taking any damage directly to their health pool. This does have a really sweet upgrade, Elegant Defense. You have learned to cast Barrier with a more stable magical pattern. Each time a barrier you have cast expires, the ability's cooldown time is reduced. 4 second cooldown reduction pretty much ensures that by the time that Barrier is about to wear off, the ability is going to be off of cooldown and ready to be cast again. Here's a couple of really good passive abilities that I think will go great with any mage build, but and certainly here in the Night Enchanter. We've got Peaceful Aura. Your Aura of Tranquility makes enemies less likely to attack you in battle even when you're damaging them. A threat reduction of 50%, pretty nice. Over here we've got Guardian Spirit, a protective barrier that springs into place around you automatically when you are badly injured. So in case you do get lazy somehow and you completely ignore that your barrier is wearing off and you haven't maybe been slashing with a uh, Spirit Blade or something like that and then you start taking hits to the face, it's gonna hurt. And if you take enough damage, well, don't worry. Guardian Spirit is here to save your ass. You get a 100% barrier generated for you with a cooldown time of 60 seconds. Down below Peaceful Aura we have Dispel. You remove hostile magic and status effects from allies while stripping beneficial effects from your enemies. This also has a really nice upgrade, Transmute Magic. Dispelling magic and status effects increases your own spells damage and barrier generation for a brief duration. So you get a boost of 50% back to your barrier and for the duration 10 seconds you have a damage bonus increase of 25%. Down here in the corner we have a passive that certainly will help you for your Night Enchanter, but I think is really like more important for the rest of your party. When you or your allies have an active barrier, the beneficial energy invigorates them and helps them recover mana or stamina more quickly. 35%. It says mana regeneration, but it does also say stamina in the description, so I'm guessing that's both equal. 35% increased regeneration of mana and stamina. Really, really awesome, especially for your melee characters, your tank, maybe your two-hand warrior and stuff like that. Don't be stingy with barrier. You definitely want to help out your bros and get them a barrier and keep them rejuvenated. To the right of that, we have something that just makes it uh, all the more ridiculous for 
a Night Enchanter build. Of course we already have, right? We already have Resurgence, which, which brings everybody back to life. Well, why not just have another one? Revival. You summon spirits to heal fallen allies in the area, getting them back on their feet and fighting again. So basically, uh, this is just another way to bring allies back into the fight should they fall. What's really interesting about this is that it has an area of effect. So if you have maybe two or even maybe all three of your allies piled up on top of each other, you can cast this on that spot and it will bring them all up back into the fight. This also has a really nice upgrade that I'm going to take later on, Life Ward. Spirits now protect your allies for a short time, reducing incoming damage and reviving them if they fall unconscious. So for 15 seconds they get uh, extra protection, which is really nice because it's very easy for them to come back into a revival state, but then take an arrow right in the face. <laughs> This helps to, uh, to ensure that your revival uh, wasn't a wasted effort. So there we go, we've got the Spirit and the Night Enchanter. Pretty much this is what I think everybody is running, or should be running, right? For their Night Enchanter build. Where you go from here can, of course, make your Night Enchanter more powerful, but more importantly can make your Night Enchanter a more interesting class to play. If you're simply, again, if you're just like casting Barrier and standing there swinging with Spirit Blade and doing nothing else, I really can't see how that's going to be fun for very long. Especially for me, I like complicated types of builds or at least lots of different buttons that I can push <laughs> to make it at least seem an illusion of complication or something like that. So here we go. From the Storm Tree, I take Energy Barrage. You launch a salvo of Elemental Blast from your staff that homes in on targets ahead of you. This launches 12 projectiles for 66% weapon damage. Uh, and it's just a fun ability, one of the, the coolest looking abilities, I think, for a mage. An easy take, and it will also lead you to Conductive Current. The more magic energy you expend, the more damage your spells do. So this increases your damage by 5% for every 10% of your missing mana. Over in the Inferno line, I take Immolate, you unleash a massive explosion, leaving enemies in the area burning in agony. Fire damage of 300%, weapon damage, and 75% per second, and this lasts 8 seconds. This is a really fun ability, I think, to combine with Fade Cloak. You just vanish, uh, pop back into the scene, they get launched up into the air, and then pretty much as they're hitting the ground, they've got Immolate underneath setting their asses on fire. Below that, I take Flashpoint. After you land a critical hit, your next spell cast doesn't trigger a cooldown period. This is something that you're going to have to actually pay attention to. There's going to be a little icon uh, over there letting you know that the next spell that you want to cast will have no cooldown. This could especially be good for being able to cast Barrier again, for your allies of course, since you don't really need it, right? And a little further on, Clean Burn. Your spells burn away ambient magic that would otherwise slow down your casting. Every spell you cast shortens your active cooldown times. This is just a little cherry on top to ensure that your abilities are coming off a of cooldown as quickly as possible, so that way you have more things to do than just standing there slashing with a Spirit Blade. That is pretty much where I'm at with my Night Enchanter build. Again, there's more room for improvement, for example, getting the upgrade to Spirit Blade, uh, there's the upgrade to Barrier, to Dispel, to Revival and stuff like that, right? But I think more importantly than that for me is to unlock more active skills that I can kind of swap around and play with, maybe get something from the Winter line. Winter's Grasp is always uh, a great skill to have, maybe even Fade Step, just to, uh, to add more mobility even if that's as far as you go for adding active abilities for a Night Enchanter build, that still gives us, of course, eight amazing abilities for this specialization that uh, not only make it a, a really powerful class to play, but um, if you play it right, as I'm about to show you, then uh, it can be quite a bit of fun. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of how I like to play my Night Enchanter.
Shall we knock? You waiting for it to say your name? Coming up, I've got more specialization videos, of course, hopefully with my own little unique twist and flavor to it to make these uh, these builds as fun as they can be. Again, I'm not trying to put together the most optimal builds uh, that you possibly can for these classes, but um, my, my goal is simply to make them fun and uh, entertaining to play. If you have a different style that you like to, for example, put together uh, of active and passive abilities for your Night Enchanter, I don't mind hearing about it. Let me know in the comment section. As for the rest of you as well, let me know what you think about this Night Enchanter or the class in general. In the comment section below, click the like button to support these Dragon Age Inquisition videos, and I'll keep them coming as quick as I can. Stay subscribed because more is coming soon. Thanks again for watching. My name is Kinetic, and I'll see you next time.